Hey everyone, James here, trying to do a bit of good. Today we're going to be learning more about Mongoose. Specifically, we're going to be learning about the populate function that Mongoose has provided us. So in front of you, we have a new function, uh, a new file called schemas. Schemas holds two schemes in which the one you've already um, are familiar with, the bit schema, which holds our first name, last name, age, and birthday, and a new schema called the lesson schema with a title and an author. The title is a string, but an author, which you might not be more familiar with, holds a type of a schema.object.id. Schema.object.id is referring to another scheme that, um, that you've saved inside Mongoose, and it's referring to bit, so, um, which is our other schema that we had. So these two schemas are inside just separated and is exported into uh, exported out both of these schemes. So now let's check in with our server.js file, which you're a little more familiar with. And there are a few changes. The first change is that we're requiring this schemes uh, file that we've created. And this will give us the schemes that we've created, the bits and the lessons. And in our model uh, with lesson and bit, we've um, connected them to the schemes that we've created. That's all pretty self-explanatory of how, how we've just compartmentalized them. Now, if we want to just show them to our right, ooh, let's start up our server. Well, let me show you what's inside our lesson scheme right now first. Right now in our lessons, we have two documents, one with the populate title with an author, which is just an ID, and a title uh, with another one that's the passport lesson with just another author ID. Now let's go back to our actual application. Let's, let's check how it looks. Cool. So this is pretty typical. We just have an author with an ID, but you can also see that this could be pretty confusing. What author is that? Or in a regular uh, thing, when a regular situation where you're trying to connect two collections, it's kind of hard to just read it off an ID. It's impossible. So how should we do this? Well, that's where the populate function comes in. The populate function uh, it works just like any of the functions that we've worked with as a query. So let's do dot populate. And we're populating on one of the keys, namely the author. So right now, once we've populated this, let's restart our our server and voila. Now that we have populated it by author, we can say that, oh, the author for the populate lesson is James, while the, um, the author for the passport lesson was Andre. And this is a powerful tool, tool that will be used, that you'll definitely be using in the future. And you definitely need to use this to make more complex queries, and it's a very, very powerful um, function. So let me give you another example of how this can work. So with lesson.find1 that takes in objects, let's say we're looking for the specifically the title to be, um, let's say, uh, populate lesson. Cool. And let's click this file and refresh the page. Cool. Now, with the title being um, Populate Lesson, we can um, find one, um, populate the author, and let's say we want to specifically get just the author name. So let's find, this will be, let's change docs to specific lesson because that's what we're finding. Lesson.author.firstname. Restarting the server. Should get node mon. Refresh. And now we see James. So right now we're finding in a lesson a specific title populate. Uh, um, populate lesson, a specific title, populate lesson, and we're able to get the first name of the author. This is what makes populate so powerful. 
we give lesson a object that it previously did not have, uh, a key that it previously did not have, but because we've connected it with an author, it now has that ability.